episode five of Truth Talk, which is an extension of episode four. We knew going into this topic of the scripture that it was probably going to be a two-parter at least, mm -hmm. uh, just because there's so much there. And so we got, we were able to discuss, I'm just going to just jump right in where we were as, um, you know, just, we were talking about the veracity of the scripture. And, um, and I think that's something we always get in discussion with, um, with the divinity of scripture and all that. How do you know, why, why, and how? Did how we, did we get did this? We get oh, this? I'm throwing my pen. Well, we use what, what evangelicals use because there's other, other things out there. See our stuff just, that's why I have, that's why I have a desk now, Lainey. I'm sorry, that's I know, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm not that, that cool. Was, I'm not that as was, cool as you, the, man. The pen dropped wasn't the pants. It's them two faces over. <laughs> well, we apologize. Y'all don't see what's going on behind the camera, but we do. We'll One to, day you will see. That's right. One well, day. moment of levity. So I had to take my Forgive jewelry us. off sorry. in between episodes because my apparently my necklace was causing audio difficulties and they had a discussion about 12 minutes in to the last video and we're all like trying to We were real watch, distracted. We're not... <laughs> So we look real funny. That's why the Bible says you shouldn't adorn yourself with jewelry and things like that. <laughs> See, exactly. When you take things out of context and you pick and choose what you use, <laughs> this is the problem we get into. But anyway, so let's talk about how we got how we got the Bible to, that we have that we today. have now. because because there are other script and we'll get into that other scriptures. But for evangelicals specifically, Protestant churches, this copy of scripture is what we point to as the infallible, inspired, inherent Word of God. Yeah. And that, we call that canonicity. It's the mm -hmm. canon of Scripture. And of course, the Old Testament canon was already set when Jesus came. It was, right. uh, th there was a version of Scripture, the Greek version called the Septuagint, and it had pretty well established the Jewish scholars as they recorded scripture and we're going to we'll talk a little bit about how scripture was handed down but right now let's just stay on canonicity um as they recorded scripture and uh, uh they they uh looked at it and, and they verified it the, the scriptures that you have the 39 books of the old testament uh there were many other books written this is not the only 39 books it may not be the only books that moses wrote are the only books that Daniel wrote, or the only book that Isaiah wrote. But it is the books that were deemed inspired. inspired. And they did that by looking at the content mm -hmm. and, and determining if that content met certain criteria mm -hmm. that, that um, would deem it to be uh, in line that would, would be the inspired. If it, it went other places, then it didn't meet that criteria mm -hmm. and so we didn't we, we didn't uh, have to the church the new testament church didn't have to deal with the canonicity of the old testament it was set mm -hmm. uh for us uh when that when that took place and then when the uh church age came along we've got the uh 37 i get my no 27 27 too, too many yeah. 27 thank you 27 yeah, 66 uh, books total. Six all told yeah so let's add them up right 20 uh thank you Jason. 27 uh of the uh, new testament and you're my financial advisor yeah, <laughs> trying, trying to add uh so uh, not good uh, so um so we had them uh that had to go through rigorous process uh that the church on and some of them like the book of james had mm -hmm. a difficult time getting in and a couple others difficult time because they were wondering were these spurless or were they real copies martin luther called it a strawy epistle yeah and right. i i look at it i'm thinking wow there's great the practical christian wisdom right. there yeah. in them five chapters yeah. it's like the it's the very straightforward proverbs of the yeah. new testament. testament yeah that's right but but anyhow that they were set and so those are the ones that we believe that are inspired but there are other Scripture and then there, there Jude the, was another one. Jude was certainly another one of them that was questioned and took some time for it to become incorporated mm -hmm. into the twenty-seven books of the New Testament because in one have. portion it kind of alludes to some of the apocrypha. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. And that's the days the, of Enoch. Yep, yeah, and that's and that's the other, the other books. And if you are of uh, some uh, like the Roman Catholicism. In a Roman Catholic Bible, you will have those some there. of those books, mm -hmm. and not all of them, but mm -hmm. some of those <laughs> books that that are there that we call the intertestament books, uh, First and Second Maccabees, which I mentioned mm -hmm. in the sermon this morning, and those are many of them are 
good books to read. Yeah. They're very have important. Have some historical context. That's right. Very important for historical it, it, context. Especially mm -hmm. that the the Maccabeans was that intertestamental period, mm -hmm. but even in Jesus' time, they still Jesus and, and the Jews practiced a festival that. Reminded them of the Maccabean, you know, right. revolt. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, John uh, chapter ten records yes. Jesus was coming to that very that's, festival. That, that's exactly so, right. Um, so, uh, so there's good data there, but they do not rise yeah. to. And, and, and if you these. do read some of them, which if you can read some on your own and take them for what they are, but if you go to Bible, they make you. We had a class on this, and some of the stories when you begin to read them, they kind of get comp. Comical, comical, yeah. like do, yeah. the dra uh, bell and the dragon, yes, and some of the it, others. It, you know, like this, you know, story of, on how Abraham died, and God said, "Well, you're fixing to go home." No, I'm not. They're arguing with one another. Yeah. You, you don't see that in the other canon, and and then there's some in the New Testament. It's like when we don't have a lot of stuff when Jesus was little, and right. then there's some fabricated story about Jesus and. He's playing at the, the by the river, throwing stones, and the Pharisees said, "Well, he was committing sin because he was playing on the." I mean, just, I mean, those things are out there, and and you can read and like, no, that that just doesn't correlate to the sixty six books that that we have. And those that are skeptic sometimes want to throw in, well, we don't teach or tell those because they tell things about the life of Jesus that we don't want to talk about and other things like that, the book of Thomas mm -hmm. and, and some of the others. And so so it's good to know this information, to know the material, just because if you ever get accosted with some of the information that's there, if you don't have some knowledge of it, people are going to write you off pretty quick mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. Saying, well, here's your field, and you don't even have a clue of what's going on mm -hmm. uh, in that field. But, but, but is it is uh, having read that that material, you know, for yourself that it doesn't meet mm -hmm. the, the, the yeah. just reading it, yeah. it. You can see it. And of course, when our church fathers had read it and studied, it, they were much right. closer to it than and, us. Mm -hmm. And then once they started having them councils, like in the three hundreds and four hundreds, most most if not all of those councils, they were right there together. Mm -hmm. This is the canon. This is the canon. This is the canon. Now you'd have some like you, you know said you know, that would go off like the council of Marcion what was his name and yeah. he was saying well this one you know this book this book this yeah. book couldn't have been there. but he didn't the, have any no, agreement no, with others. But the it. majority of them they, they line right up. Yeah. And I think you can look at those those like especially pre New Testament you know those first temple writings and second temple writings and things like that they are missing what is found in our canon books. And, and that the is that. The characteristics of God. Yes, those divine characteristics mm -hmm. that, that flow through. Um, but that does not mean to say that there are not books there that are not profitable. I mean, you look at mm -hmm. like the works of Josephus and being able to interpret using him. I mean, I've heard you preach using Josephus as historical context. He was a Jewish for, historian. Yeah, he, was, right, he lived in the time the of Jesus. the greater part of my life. Yeah. You know, and he was a historian, so his job was to go back through all that Jewish history to give us a way to view our current literature. Sure. You know, yeah. so I mean, I think it's that, that you, but you have to be you careful. You take it for what it is. You do. You have to take it for what it is, and you have to be careful, and you have to make sure that you are spirit-led. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got Herodias, another historian mm -hmm. that does a good job that you can read behind and gather information. you got Josephus is, is one, and several others that uh, Plinius, Pliny is one. That and, and as you, you get use. closer to Jesus's, Plinius is good. And as you get closer, you have to be more careful because like what, what you preached on this morning, it, there, it starts becoming a Hellenistic culture mm -hmm. in in the in Palestine and all that area, and so their goal was to get rid of this type of scripture. Mm -hmm. You know, they wanted to burn it to the ground, and that's been the goal of Satan from the beginning is to just er eradicate, you know, truth. writings and truth and all that. Kind of, so that, but so that this other culture can can take over, overtake mm -hmm. you know and that type of thing but it is it is important to know those pieces of literature and what they were for and and, and why that's that's why and I'm why always, they're not part of, of us the, uh, the of holy we, bible that we yeah. deem as the infallible inerrant word of god, god yeah. but but i would uh, a serious student i would encourage to read 
mm -hmm. especially something like First and Second Maccabees. Mm -hmm. you, you're you're going to get a good history of something like Antiochus. Uh, understand what happened in the temple. Why? Mm -hmm. Why the desecration? Yeah, the mm -hmm. desecration. All of that. I mean, that, that history is that's where it's at. If you're going, if you're going to learn from that. And so those those type of things are very useful. And when Jesus comes on the scene, if you haven't got some of that information in your mind, it's not going to make sense. I mean, you're not going to understand why you're having a Hellenistic culture and then this strict Hebrew culture. You're not going to understand the division between the Sadducee and the Pharisee. All of that, because when you leave Malachi, none of that's there. Right. Mm -hmm. None of that's there. There's no frame of reference after the last page, mm -hmm. page of Malachi, flipping over to Matthew mm -hmm. 1 for somebody that's just reading through their Bible mm -hmm. to know what's gone got, on for 400 years. And all of a sudden I got a Sadducee, a um, Pharisee. And, and <laughs> you know, what had happened within the Jewish the Herodian culture Herodian dynasty. Itself. Yeah. Where did that yeah. come, come from? from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah no. and, and you've got this, the stories that go on with all of that that's intermixed in your New Testament. And if you haven't read or know some of that, yeah, you can, understand, you can understand that Jesus came and died for your sins. Mm -hmm. and you know, that, that is there. But, but again, if you want to listen to Scripture rather than just read it, you don't have the background mm -hmm. to listen at what's going on in that culture mm -hmm. and why that the culture was so uh, polarized one way or the other when it came to Jesus. And you have to know that history that was there. You have to have seen the intensity that's going on mm -hmm. in that culture up into that day. Mm -hmm. And you have to hear that culture believing that they needed a Savior and, and uh, what they had been through. I mean, you have to have seen them know that their priest had been desecrated, that an altar had been built over their altar, that a pig had been literally slain on that altar, and its blood just splattered all mm -hmm. over the place and what that meant to a Jewish person mm -hmm. and all that went on there and how that altar, uh, how that sanctuary eventually was clean, all cleansed, all that has to be in your mind when Jesus steps on the scene as mm -hmm. you don't get all that's going on there. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, just part of what's necessary if, 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 when you're reading. So when we're talking about Scripture, there's the inspired Scripture and then there's the things that relate that can help you support and, yeah don't read them like you read scripture but mm -hmm. understand that which brings us i think to our next thing that that i was thinking about and would be helpful would have been helpful to me if i had known some of this earlier I, 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 you learn this stuff as you go along if you do it the way i did it and uh so um as you get, as you translate script, translation is a difficult process. Mm -hmm. We have our scripture and we read it and we just think, boy, you know. And we have folks that fight over translations and they have no clue how difficult it is to, to, to bring an ancient scripture that was written by people that lived three and four thousand years ago. And... Uh, in, in the culture and they lived in and, and wrote first of all in Hebrew which Hebrew is a very difficult, difficult language. language. It's complex. It's yes. complex. Maybe as <laughs> complex is a better word than difficult because mm -hmm. every stroke can mean something. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, a, a letter in the Hebrew alphabet denotes an idea mm -hmm. or a concept. Mm -hmm. And not not a sound, a letter or a sound. <laughs> right. to and it's read right, right to left, and we read left to right. So you have to and, understand and, and, and how that affects how uh, one, how, you know, stroke of a pen uh, could change the context. Mm -hmm. and, of, and remember, they were writing; they didn't have material like you and I have, so they couldn't make a mistake and You're just right tear it up and throw it away. So they were very diligent mm -hmm. in what they did, and they preserved. So when they went to writing, and they wrote. From, right, but they didn't use commas. They didn't use punctuation marks. They didn't use periods. Anything to save space, mm -hmm. they they did. Mm -hmm. And so you didn't know where a sentence, the 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 the, the way it was written, the structure told you what something meant. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of times, what we call vowels, they didn't use. You had to understand that was there. Or specific words. They assumed you would know that word was there, so they didn't waste that mm -hmm. that 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 parchment. That, that parchment or that clay Scroll. brick or whatever they whatever were writing, they were writing on. happened to be writing on. <laughs> they didn't they didn't waste it. So here you have um, a, a, a copy of scripture 
that's being passed down. And of course, originally what happened is the scribes, they would, trans, they would transfer from one uh, piece of information to the next, and they would verify as they went. And if they made a mistake, they destroyed what they were doing and started all over again. Mm -hmm. And so it was a meticulous very thing meticulous uh, th task. that they were doing. They were very meticulous mm -hmm. in what they, they did. And another thing that is so good for us, when they finished copying from this to this, they kept mm -hmm. copy A. That's right. They didn't destroy it. They kept yeah. it because it was precious. Mm -hmm. Which is you different than a lot of the other Almost every other. culture yeah. because w if, when they made a copy, they destroyed the prior copy. Mm -hmm. so that you didn't have that to revert to. So to understand the, the, the basis on which our scripture is built, yeah. is that, that was completely counterintuitive to what was done culturally around and that, them and, and that was with their the, documents. The biggest discoveries was the Dead Sea Scrolls mm -hmm. because some of the documents that we, manuscripts that we were able to find with the Dead Sea Scrolls what predated what we already had but verified. Right. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. what we already had. Because you can look at something like um, the Code of Hammurabi that was discovered and you can look, I mean, however old that is, I mean, it's written on a stone tablet, so that's how and old it is. And mm -hmm. there's one copy. And there's one copy of it and how that was still applied mm -hmm. thousands of years yeah. down the road, you know, um, by, that, by that culture, mm -hmm. that Chaldean or whatever culture mm -hmm. that came from, you know, because they had that one copy mm -hmm. that did not change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and so I think that, I mean, you just look, it's it's yeah. similar. And it, it just and shows you the authenticity, like you said, that that copy, a mm -hmm. few copies, or you can go back, you know, to, to Homer, mm -hmm. and we got a few copies of his, and, you know, people want to discredit the Bible. There's over 5,000 manuscripts of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. There's only a handful. You're saying Homer mm -hmm. is... Authentic. Never question. Here is the Bible who has over five thousand, you know, the New Testament. That and that shows same. you mm -hmm. the and, reliability. And so we of find it. this fragment or book or yes. page, and it has it. It might have been that one they were copying from. We don't have any originals. No. You don't, but we have better. What we what we have to convince folks of, or we have better, better. than the original because we right. have copies of copies of copies, and when you put those copies together. They from different all, places. From different places. Different, they, different, they, different time periods. periods. They, go to, right. they go together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They all match. They match. Mm -hmm. And so that's better than having the Just original. Just one original, original copy. Original. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so we, we have that. And if there is a discrepancy, you can go back and look and say, well, this person or this sect, we find it in their culture. This is why this discrepancy happened. You can see the reasons why the discrepancy. Something like the New Testament. Tell you, you got the Alexandrian and what? What's the other one? No, I, yeah, yeah. It, yeah but anyway, I'll maybe come back. Like in, in your New Testament, you'll be reading like, in, like in your King James, the New King James. You'll have a, more of a verse or more, you know. And then the other, it might be there, but it's over here in this section. Yep. And you're thinking, well, why is it included here and why is it in parentheses over here? Well. Since the writing of the King James or other, we found older manuscripts, mm -hmm. and and in some of them it's there, some of them it's not. But the majority of it, like you said, ninety nine percent of it is all all right all, there. all there. So, other than any other thing, no, there is no other literature of any kind that can claim what we can claim when we go back and look at at, at Bible translation. So you you started with the Hebrew, then. Lo and behold, Hebrew became extinct when Aramaic. Aramaic took over. They went into Babylon. They went into uh, captivity. Jerusalem was destroyed. They came back a unified nation, but they didn't come back with a unified Lang language. language. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then along comes Alexander the Great. And, and the Greek. Uh, Much of the over. New Testament. Or, I mean, is all of the New Testament it's in Greek? Greek. Greek. Yeah. And so, so, so here, the Old Testament was translated from Hebrew, which is, you know, this ancient, ancient language. Ancient language that at this is, point, even. That is very, what, what was the word we said we used for it? Not difficult, complex. but complex. complex. Into Greek, which is difficult and complex. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it's written from left to right, right. now. And it's a language of... Um, of uh, it's really two languages. It's got a Koine Greek, and then you got its classical mm -hmm. uh, 
language, but most of the Bible is Koine, Koine, which is common. Common, mm -hmm. and, and it, it is a, a language of not each. It's descriptive. Each its words describe ideas, thoughts, mm -hmm. and rather than where in the Hebrew, you each letter meant something, mm -hmm. phrases mean something in Greek, mm -hmm. and so now we have it taken out of this uh, complexity into this romantic language, mm -hmm. which is Greek, That's right. and so here God brings it into that language and. I mean, and why would God do that? That was a universal language. language. Right. He wants to know. He wants everyone people. to be able He's to speaking. have access. And I think to that's when you see the divinity of Scripture mm -hmm. is that He wanted. That is what allowed it to be translated mm -hmm. over and over and over and over again with an erring accuracy, mm -hmm. um, because He did use this common language. The if they had used the language of the um, intellectuals, I can't remember what it is, but the Koine Greek. Um, and I don't even know that we're pronouncing that correctly. Koinia. Yeah, Koinia. Koinia. And um, that that was that common, everybody spoke it. It's kind of like, go. It's, it's colloquial. You know, it's what everybody speaks. It's what everybody knows. If, even if you're in a different part of um, of Judea, somebody's going to speak that, that Greek, you know, because it's the common language. And that is when you think, why did God do that? But that is because that mm -hmm. is the beauty of inspired scripture mm -hmm. is that it allowed it to be And fast forward for 13, 1400 years after the resurrection of Christ and the New Testament was written, mm -hmm. then you have people starting to put it down in English. English yeah. right. And it had actually, even worse than that, it had been transferred into Latin. Yes. Mm -hmm. Through the Roman well, church. Yeah. I jumped the gun. Yeah, I through, apologize. Through, yeah, through, through Latin, which is... The people could, the common people understand could not read. It, right? That's yeah, right. Yeah. So, uh, so all this, but yet God through it all, superintended, passed that word down to us so we know we have. And now you take, after that, you take a, any good English version and go back and take one of those ancient copies of uh, Hebrew and look at what that says and what we have, and you have the same thing. thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Mm -hmm. You have the same thing mm -hmm. that God intended for the Hebrew to have, you have in your hands today. Yeah. That, is, that, is, that is divinely inspired inerrancy. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, I know that uh, folks uh, uh, get, a, get a lot of anxiety over uh, different things about uh, translation and that. But you cannot, I mean, God did that marvel of the Dead Sea Scrolls in 1948 when that little shepherd boy was mm -hmm. out there and he threw the rock in the cave and he heard the tinkle and he said, There's what in there. the world is that? And we found that the pot was broken and out come the treasure of the Dead Sea Scrolls, these uh, uh, Jewish folks that had shut themselves away from the world and Copied scripture and uh, Essing, no, no. Essings, Essings, yeah, Essings, Essings, like. Essings, yeah, yeah, and uh, and so, uh, and so, and they're then, basically they, like hermits, you know, yeah, like basically, like, yeah, yep, yeah. 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 and uh, and so, uh, and, and they had sealed that word up, and here God in this time brought out those Dead Sea Scrolls, and uh, now scripture that was written before the time of Christ. I mean, a whole the Isaiah, if I remember correctly, Isaiah was almost, almost a com incomplete. complete mm -hmm. book of Isaiah, and then other yeah. parts Sparks and pieces. Of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when we compare them to what we got today, there is no discrepancy. I went saw them, by the way. Oh, have you been Mobile, when they were in Mobile, okay. Alabama? Yeah, I, went, I haven't. Yeah, I'd love beautiful. to see. That's uh, one of my. That's one when, when we can travel again. I want to go to D.C. and go to the Museum of the Bible and and uh, see some of this. This. The historical artifacts. archives. Yes, Hobby Lobby guy yes. that, uh, has done that. The greens. Mm -hmm. Greens, that's right. And mm -hmm. so, so we, 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 can, we can have this confidence. Mm -hmm. And so the devil decided in my lifetime that he would get us all bent out of shape over what version, translation of Scripture. And so me coming up in my life, uh, King James Bible, was the predominant Bible, and it came that way because of all that was going on in the world. There was higher criticism, mm -hmm. uh, challenging the veracity of Scripture, a lot of things that were going on, and so the King James Bible became the rallying point and, uh, of, of conservatism. Right. And, uh, and I, I don't think the folks that originally started meant for it to be the one and only. The one and only. Mm -hmm. 
because that would be like going back to the beginning and, and saying, all right, we're going to copy this text of Scripture, and uh, once we get it copied, we're going to destroy it so nobody can check things out, and we're going to have this, and we're going to destroy it all along. Well, then you just got that. If all you got is that one version, then you don't carry on that, uh, that ability to compare the many so that you make sure that you've got the infallible Word of God before us. And there's lots of good, wonderful people yes. today that are still King James only folks, yeah. and they will fight you over the King James Bible tooth and nail. I love the King James Bible. I was raised on it. I have it, mem have it memorized. Mm -hmm. I don't have all of it memorized. Yes. Uh, but, but, but the scriptures I have memorized are memorized in King James. I think it, as a word-for-word -word translation, there is none better. Mm -hmm. But but uh, words have changed. That's mm -hmm. right. And, we don't and context we don't, changes. Yeah, peoples. we don't talk like that. That's no. right. And what, what some people don't realize, you're not reading the original King James. If no. it was the original right. 1611 King you James, you, you, you could you not understand it. one word <laughs> no. that is written there. Oh, no. it's so romantic. You could read it to begin <laughs> That's with. That's exactly right. Much less you could turn somebody to John 3, 16, <laughs> try to say what's there, and they, they would have no clue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, but, you know, we understand that. But, you know, like words don't evolve per se, but speech. Mm -hmm. That's we, right. we do not mm -hmm. talk in that Elizabethan era, you know, that old English. We talk in the dialect in which we have today. And the good news is there's Bibles that are written with the, the, the language that we speak. Praise the Lord. That is just as precise. <laughs> yes. and, and I know some might kick back at that, but it really, literally, like you just said, you can open it up. They're using the same manuscripts, you know, the same, the same ways of translating, you know, these words. Now, there are some Bibles, like we kind of talked about one time, that two different ways of translating, word for word or a, 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 a more of a, a phrase yeah, type deal. Well, the paraphrase Bible, that's totally different, but... You know, like the King James, the New King James, it's a literal word-for-word -word translation, and more like the NIV and others. They use maybe a little bit more language to try to describe the right. word. Right. There might be more what, words what there. What is the point that they're trying That's to it. make? With but this? it's still mm -hmm. making, trying to, they're not trying to change the meaning. Mm -hmm. Both of them are trying to convey the same point. Oh, yeah. And to where you get, can understand the, what the Word of God is we saying. We get both Bibles and lay them down and read and get the best out of, out of both of them. Both. That's what I love about like having a Bible app <coughs> yes. where you can change versions. Mm -hmm. And I do that. I have and, three or four Bibles mm -hmm. laid out a lot of times when I'm studying different trans. Okay, that's how it says here. How did these translate it? How did they translate? Okay. And, and sometimes a translation you might not use really translate the verse better than the Bible that you like. Right, yep. mm -hmm. And then you have, like Lanny said, you have these other ones like, oh, what the, uh, message. the message and others. Mm -hmm. And they, these are more commentaries. I put them on the line of commentaries. They're resources. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't if you want to read a story in the Bible in a narrative format right. yes. without mm -hmm. the breakup of chapter, um, verse delineation, um, it, it, and get a thought, it, it's not a bad reference material or resource material. Um, if you ever read the story of the man who who had the idea to cr come up with the Message Bible, it's very inspiring and in, in why he wanted to do it. But you just have to be careful. That like, can't be your only, only resource. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and But it's just like using these other intertestament documents and everything, understanding where they sit in the resource range and, and what their use is for and um, and how to get the most out of it, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that's up to you to be to be diligent um, in, in doing your research and knowing, you know, what is good mm -hmm. and what is profitable, yeah. you know, because what it boils down to is the scriptures are the measurement mm -hmm. or, or the scale that we use mm -hmm. to determine our, our, how we stack up, I guess, mm -hmm. for, for lack of a better term, it's, it is the account of God and what the standards of expectation. Right. You know? And how his standards don't change. Mm -hmm. And we compare our cultural standards, where we are, mm -hmm. to the scripture in order to know where we need to be in standing with God. I, I, one of my notes was is the Bible forces us to confront the truth about ourselves. Mm -hmm. That is its goal. Mm -hmm. that Conviction is, its is part of why it is here. That's yeah. right. To, to give us that standard of measurements that we can look and see, 
this is where I fall short mm -hmm. and this is how I get back right. to that standard. And that's the reason we need to be careful about making our standard something other than scripture. People right. make their standard this person, this man, this mm -hmm. preacher, uh, this loved one. They are not the standard. Mm -hmm. that's right. now, the Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Yes. But but he never said make me the standard. Mm -hmm. and, he even had an argument about it. And he's like, who who do you think I am? Mm -hmm. You know, and he's like, I am not I'm God. I'm the chief of all sinners, I, he called right. himself. He, he's like, y'all are arguing about who's greater, who's this, and who is that. I am just like you, you know, and, and I follow the Christ, mm -hmm. you know, who came to me, you know, and everything. So we have to be careful that we don't put people up on pedestals. Well, right? I think a good one is in Matthew 6 when Jesus is teaching on worrying. Mm -hmm. The King James, New King James, which of you by worrying can add one cubit of his to his stature. Other translations will say, what about you worrying? Can you add a day to your life? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, was there two different? No. Mm -hmm. They were the same, conveying, conveying, same conveying the same, same idea. idea. Mm -hmm. Worrying will not make you no taller or add, a day. or add a day to your life. Worrying can shorten your life. life yeah. You know, you can worry yourself to, to right. death, but not That's to right. life. Yeah. But the same points being made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Before we uh, finish, uh, I did look up the uh, author that I like to use, and I think he, he's a very good author, and one I would recommend anybody have in the library, and that's J. Sidlow Baxter. And uh, J. Sidlow Baxter is a excellent uh, writer, uh, good at uh, uh, putting things in a form, an outline form, so you can follow them. He has two books specifically I like, A Strategic Grasp of the Bible. Uh, he just takes the Bible and puts it in a very concise format. He gives you, in one place in there, he gives you one word and one phrase for every book of the Bible. So you can just take the entire Bible and with one word and one phrase, say what that book stands for. And, uh, and then explore the book. It's his other. Uh, oh, explore the book is explore. really good. Yeah, it's a, it, now it is a... Um, written in, in a uh, learning format. It's uh, it's a thick book, and it's a uh, you know it's a study book. He has very um, old school style of writing. I looked it up real quick. He was born in 1903. You know, <laughs> so you're. I mean, right. it, 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 it can be difficult, you know. Mm -hmm. I have I have one of Dad's copies of Explored Book that stays at my house because mm -hmm. it's my go-to. I mean, it's if you're trying to find something, I'm, I'm telling you, some of these older resources are great resources, and um, but you do have to kind of remember that they are written in a little bit more old-fashioned style mm -hmm. of writing. Um, well, it's like a lot of our, you know, grandparents. So they all their their commentary to go who was Matthew Henry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody fought, but. It's, you know, written Matthew Henry's from a long time yeah, ago, yeah. but there's, 15, good, there's good stuff there. Mm -hmm. I love reading stuff Charles Spurgeon wrote. Mm -hmm. Yes, me too. Um, he, lived, he, he lived two, three hundred years ago. Yeah. So, and, and it's because they're, they've been led by God yes. mm -hmm. to, to this wisdom that they've been able to, to, to put. And not everybody can write, like can, can understand and then put it down on paper mm -hmm. right, where you can understand it as well. That's a gift. That's a spiritual gift that, that I think many of us take, I mean, take for granted. I mean, think you look at the Bible and say a lot of these people that, that were inspired to write the Bible, they were not learned mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. they were, they were, it was a gift that was given to them in order that God's plan be fulfilled. Um, you know, so, so it's something. One thing that I think we need to, that I, we've talked about, and it's one of the things that, and, and we can close on this and y'all's thoughts on it, that, the, the scripture is the very breath of God. We, we talked about how, uh, a lot last season, that, you know, the breath of God and God breathing into Adam, you know, breathing into his nostrils. He was just clay until then, you know, but when he did that, the very breath of God is what made Adam a living being. And the breath of God is what makes this book a living thing. It is accurate. And it is just as alive and applicable today as it was the day it was, it was initially written down. And I think we, we have to, the truths that are in here are unchanging. Mm -hmm. And that, we, that when we, it is not something that is malleable by human. And although we try mm -hmm. and the devil will do his best to destroy it, 
but it is inspired and it will live way longer than because it is the very breath of God. And, and, and that is something that... It will be know. opened up at Judgment Day. That's mm -hmm. right. It, it will be what will be opened up, one of the books that will be opened up and will be judged by. Mm -hmm. Well, we hope that this talk on the scripture and uh, us delving a little bit into why we are so, so, or why as Christians we are so drawn to the scripture and why we should be so drawn to the scripture. I think maybe that's, we're not as drawn as we should be sometimes um, because we, I think a lot of it, without getting too, you know, I don't want to start a whole other type of conversation, but it's something we can talk more as we go. We do not allow ourselves time to be still. And my dad said to listen to scripture because we, we, we're so busy right. and that um, we don't take time to just focus on what it's trying to tell us. But if we do, it will open up our Bible and strengthen the foundation, you know, of, of who we are and why we believe what we believe. Um, so that is our topic next week. We will begin a new topic. I'll refer back to my notes. Um, do y'all, let me see. I'd have to pull it out. Salvation. So we'll start um, with the topic of salvation. And so why salvation is core to um, knowing God. And salvation is all through, even though Christ doesn't come to us until, until, the, New Testament. until the New Testament, the Bible consistently, this scripture consistently points to salvation through Christ through Jesus Christ, throughout the entire throughout the through its entirety. Mm -hmm. So we look forward to talking about that next week. We look forward to to um, sharing with you um, our thoughts and feelings on that as we start next week's topic on scripture here on Truth Talk. Thanks. <laughs>